right, welcome back to the channel. Um, today's video, I'm going to um, I'm going to go over the carbs. I'm going to be quite thorough because um, off camera, I've done it a few times now. I've um, I've been having an issue with like um, cylinder one keeps flooding every time it's left overnight. Um, it seems to flood cylinder one. So I'm going to take the carbs apart today and I'm going to go through them step by step. Um, everything to check for. Try and be as thorough as possible. So that when I put them back together that they should be absolutely spot on. Um, I've got two sets of carbs so I'm going to use the best parts off both to try and get it fixed. Um, so first thing I need to do is take the tank off. So. Um, yep, yeah, so I'm just under the uh, under the tank. Let's get the correct um, Allen key. Get the tank up. Start taking the carbs off. Right, this video might be a bit longer than the usual ones because I am going to be very thorough. I want to run through it step by step. Because I've seen there's quite a few videos on uh, YouTube, but they're usually really low lit, and you can't hardly see what they're doing. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and do this one as good as I can. So, the best thing to do is actually take your tank completely off. It's a bit of a pain. But um, you need to get a 12 mil socket, and then the nuts that hold it onto the actual subframe. You'll see it, it's like a bracket that holds the battery. There's two 12 mil nuts in the top of there. Just ripping them out. I'm not gonna run through each procedure of undoing bolts, but um, we'll get through that. Okay, move the camera to a slightly different angle. You want to take your vacuum pipe off the tank and your actual main fuel pipe. Make sure you disconnect this uh, little connector here. Um, that's before you take the fuel tank off. And there'll be a sure fine whether your pet cop works. Because when you take your fuel tank off, when you disconnect this, if your pet cock's not working, then the fuel's going to leak out everywhere. So once you've got the fuel tank out of the way, you want to disconnect this pipe from here, this breather pipe. Because next thing you want to do is take the air box off. So you want to disconnect this one. Disconnect the one on the side. Um, I've put like a different Jubilee clip on this one, so it's a bit tighter. Yeah, disconnect them, take the screw out the top, and then just get your uh, air filter off. I forgot to add, before you start to, before you try to pull your air box off, there's four Jubilee clips that attach to the top of the carbs. Um, undo those first, and then the whole lot will come off in one go. Once you've got the air box off, take this pipe off the front. Make sure you don't lose the clip. But leave the pipe attached to your carbs. Don't take that off. Just leave that on there. And just put your air box out of the way, nice and safe. Oh my god, that's full of fuel. That's probably what the problem's gonna be then. Just thought I'd add before I carry on with this video. Um, you must remember that you you're dealing with um, fresh fuel here, so Safety, you know, keep safety and make sure you're in a well ventilated area. No, you know, no ignition sources. It'd probably be best if you had a fire extinguisher close to you. Um, or at least a bucket of, you know, sand or something. But just be aware of what you're doing. Don't be smoking over the top of it and, you know, lighting bloody lighters for God's sake. 
I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but the next thing you want to do, there's a, take the connector, so, so there's a connector at the side here. It's quite difficult to get out this one, so what I usually do is do a flat head screw over. And if you push it down the side of it, so you push it down the side and then lift it, it seems to like come off a little bit easier. There we go. So you need to take that connector off and then work your way along. There's the connector to the solenoid, the first one on this side. Same again, just press the clip in and we'll clip it. Uh, there's one here. Block him up here, we can't really see properly what's going on. There we go. And then each heater, little heating element, has got a little clip on the bottom, so pull each one of them off. That's it, so all them connectors are free, that's free. There's, one, there's another little one here. So once all the connectors are free, leave your vacuum hoses on. And the next thing you want to do, see this little, this little bung here, there's one this side, there's one the other side. Pop that open and get your posi drive screwdriver in, because that will undo the bottom of the carbs where they attach to the engine. Leave your throttle cables in for the moment, just get the carbs off first and I'll show you what to do then. Yeah, you're going to need a long screwdriver like this to reach through the hole into where the carbs are. Okay? So once you've undone that, well, the one on this side and the one on this side, the carbs will just pop off. Once you've loosened them up, like I say, you just get the carbs, just pull them forward like that, they just pop off. Once you've popped them off, Get your spanner on there, ten mil. Just crack the, crack them open like that. Once you've loosened them off, you can disconnect the uh, adjusters. One of the things that's a bit of a pain in the ass is your um, your idle adjuster. On the original, it's um, it's screwed onto your water bottle, so you have to tickle the side fair enough to get that off. But mine, I've left it just like loose down here, so that for this for this sort of reason, really, so you've got to keep taking your fair enough every time that you want to um, do some work on the carbs. I'll show you one more later. So then your choke cable, all you do with that is just pull it and it comes out. So then take all your cables out. That's it, then we're free. I've not drained the carbs yet, so this has still got fuel in it. But I'll show you an easy way to get rid of that. So I'm just gonna put these over on the uh, Work surface. Right, so I've moved over to the work surface. Every time you work on carbs, you want to have a really clean, well lit area. Because you don't want to be getting any excess dirt or anything into your, uh, you know, into your carbs and the uh, fine jets and all that sort of stuff. Well, because there's fuel still in here, Easiest way to get it out is, um, actually what I'll do, this overflow pipe, the one that goes into your air box, the one that goes into the front, the one way to do it is put that into your, put that into your container, and then where your fuel line is, just blow it. Whew. 
So this is one of the reasons why it's confusing me why these are, are flooding. Because if I blow into the fuel, and bear in mind the pet cock does shut off as soon as I turn the engine off, it shuts all fuel coming into here. So if I try and blow into this, you watch as soon as the um, floats close. can't blow into it at all. Bah. Anyway, I'm gonna give them a once over. See if I can figure out why they keep flooding. So, first things first, just to keep things nice and basic, keep things out of the way. Remove your solenoids, so. They just like you just pull the clip across like that and they just slide off so slide them off and then carbs one and four and connect it together so that's them two just pull the pipes off it's a bit tight and then carbs two and three and plumb together Pull them off. Put that to one side. Before I carry on, I'm just gonna give this a wipe over, just to make sure the surface is nice and, nice and clean. Nice. You can take the fuel pipe off now, considering that. So, take that off. Take that off, put that to one side. Right. So first, well, second, third, whatever, fourth it is. Next thing I need to be doing is taking the float bowls off. You want to use the correct screwdriver to take these float bowls off, to take the screws out, because if you use a normal Phillips, you can actually tear the ends up. Um, not 100% sure what it's called. I think it's called a JS1 or some or JSA. It's got a slightly, it kind of goes big. Instead of it just being flat, like Positroid, but flat down, it, it kind of flares out a little bit. But you'll feel it when you've got a, the proper one, because when you put it in, as you go to turn it, you'll feel it's got like a really good, a really good connection. So on these, um, on these GSXR, carbs each float ball's got three screws in i'm not going to bore you with this but i'm going to take all of the uh, all four of them off um put them to one side and i'll show you what to do next right now i've got all the bottoms off all the float balls um it exposes the floats like the actual floats themselves first you want to do is just Check the springiness. I mean, I've been through these carbs now. This must be about the fifth time that I've been through them. But I think what I keep doing, I keep sort of rushing, not doing a thorough test on them before I put them back on. Uh, and what I did do, I bought a cheap eBay um, float needle kit. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, they do seem to be sealing, but they obviously aren't because they're leaking from somewhere. But today I am going to be very thorough. Um, so the one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm going to check before I start messing. I want to check the float height on the floats as they are to see whether you know that potentially was a problem. So it's good to uh, invest in a decent set of verniers. Um, it's probably, it is better to get the ones where, I think they all come with them now anyway. But as you open them up. 
as you open them up you get this part on the bottom see what it is with that part then it's quite easy to to measure the depth um, of a certain item especially flo uh, floats in the handbook it says seven mils for these floats and that's measuring off the top part the highest level and it says seven mils plus or one so you can you can do if you do it at eight mils you'll get less fuel, uh, less fuel less fuel if you do it at six mils you'll have more fuel so i'm going to put it on the eight mil um just for the sake of just in case they're coming up a bit higher and then letting the fuel in um or should i say a bit lower um so i'm going to do this off camera i'm just going to quickly measure them all see if there's any um discrepancies in the height as they are and the best way to measure them as well is not actually foot on the back holy smokes didn't get all that fuel out did i so what you do is you lean them back until they're resting which is about 45 degrees so we're talking about there that's just right on the springy bit right yeah let me just clean all this fuel up if you're doing it properly as well you could have there's a drain um plug on the end on the bottom of each of the um float bowls um i was being a bit lazy i was trying to do it quick but if you undo that you can drain all the fuel out the bottom but, uh, like i say well, this plastic thing needed a bit of a clean so there we go now we're back in a minute i'm just going to measure these see what we might all right so just been through them and they're all a bit like these three are quite close but this one is well under it's about at six mil or something so what i've done i've set it to eight mil and what i'll do is i'll check each one so if i put it on like that and it touches the top i'll keep adjusting the tab so to, to make them higher and lower i don't know if people know to make them higher and lower you get a little flathead screwdriver So you get yourself a little precision flathead screwdriver like this. And there's a little tab in here and you can higher it and lower it, but you can bend it up. If you bend it up, it's gonna go lower. And if you bend it in, it's gonna come higher. So I'm gonna go across them now, putting this on each one, making sure they're all exactly on eight. See if you see that then. So this is set to eight put it onto the surface see how it's hitting it see how it's knocking it down so if that's knocking that down that means that's higher than um, 8 mil so if I pull it out and uh, bend the tab out slightly so I'll try it again just touching it now yep so that's right that's that. that was only just touching that so i'll do that across all of them and to be fair i think that's why that one's flooding because this one is at i mean let me undo this and see actually what it is at
So that's six and a half mil, that one is. So that suggests that, you know, it should be at seven mil. Seven mil plus or minus one. So, okay, you know, six mil is, it obviously isn't, it's not, it's not closing it enough. So I'm going to set that to eight mil. Give it an extra one and a half mils. Um, yep, yeah, so I'll do that. Then I'll come back. Next thing you want to be doing, once you've set all the float balls, is you want to check whether your um, needles are leaking. Because I'm convinced mine aren't leaking. I don't know where this fuel's coming from. It must have been this one being um, set too low. So six and a half mil is quite, it's quite low. Um, let me reset this. If you've got one of these little handheld pumps, this is adequate to do this. So, right. So pull that out. Set your PSI to five. I don't know where the camera is. Uh, do you see it on there? So yeah, set your PSI to five. Put your fuel line on. Put it onto the end of the fuel line. Make sure it's facing this way, so it's uh, so that the needles are seated in the uh, in the place, and then turn your pump on. Okay, so we've got a leak this time. See, it held last time. I need to probably do a bit of investigating on this one because that held just before I came off the camera. And then when I put it back on, it didn't hold. So something, something's letting that out. Let me just have a quick look and I'll see if I can work it out. Okay, that's really strange. Um, I've just banged the carbs and they're holding to 10 PSI now, or 9.5. Okay, it is slightly dropping. It's holding 9 PSI now. Um, I think what I need to do is get some sort of like WD-40. Just spray it around, see if I can see any leak. And it'll pinpoint where the leak is. I'll try that now while we're on the video. We've got a little tiny bit left. I don't have really got any left. What else have I got? I use a bit of this one. This one's not too bad. So if I, if I spray a little bit about. I've heard putting a little bit of grease on the actual rubbers in the um, where the needles sit. That can help with um, sealing a bit better. It seems to be holding pressure, so let me just let the lay it out. It's held pressure again now. That's 10, 10 PSI that is. Um, and I mean 10 PSI should be lifting the, need, the, the needle up. There's something wrong with this one here. Seems to be an issue with this one. It's 
when you press the others they're not giving pss, 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 they're not hissing but when you push this one I've got some spare parts so what I want to do I want to change that one out um, see, if that, see if that gets to the bottom of it I've actually got a whole set of new uh, well same new I've got another set of carbs here. So, I want to mess about with this one here. See if I can get it, to, see if I can get it to seal properly. And I think that'll be the problem. Anyway, I think I'm going to tie this video up. Um, it was just to give everybody a good look at the carbs. I mean, to just give you a quick, let's turn this up. For people who don't really know, this is your main jet. These big main ones there. This has been Dynajetted, this has. So um, it's got like, um, I think the 128s here, the 126s here. So this is your main jet. These are your pilot jets here. A lot of people don't understand how pilot jets work. A lot of people don't understand how pilot jets work. Your pilot jet is pretty much one of the most important because your pilot jet is feeding fuel all the time. And then your mixture screw, which is um, the one in here. What that does, as soon as your engine's running and it's pulling air through, that's what it does. How much you screw that in and out is it sucks the fuel in from your pilot screw. Sorry, your pilot jet. And it depends how much you turn your pilot screw is how much it lets through so it doesn't matter where your throttle position is it's always going to be running on your pilot jet but as you can imagine as the as the revs pick up it starts on your pilot jet so it's all well it's always on your pilot jet so you know even if you've got like throttles that's running like rubbish anywhere if your pilot jets um gummed up it's going to affect everything because your pilot jet's running really good and it's really clear and then when you put your main jets in it uses the pilot jet and the main jet to make the mixture so if your pilot jet's a little bit stuck like jammed up um plus your idle will be rubbish but if your idle's a little bit like jammed up and then when it goes over to the main jet your main jet will be struggling because it's not getting the pilot jet fuel as well so it'll still run, but it'll be on the lean. It'll run lean. Anyway, I'll probably leave that for another video in the future. But uh, I think I found the problem. It is to do with this one here. So I'm going to keep investigating that. And I suppose on my, next, uh, on my next video, I'll give an update to see whether I've fixed it or not. Because it's absolutely doing my head in with this bike at the moment. Um, I mean, everybody. Everybody's probably seen it already. But... Um, I've got it in fantastic condition. You know, it runs really nice, but it just when I leave it overnight, it just keeps flooding. Keeps flooding, I say, keeps flooding the carb one, cylinder one. Okay, what I've decided to do, the floats in these ones seem in really good nick compared to these ones. So I'm going to change the needles and the floats over from these ones to these ones. So what you need to do is you need to get a small Allen key like this. You push the pin out it's in the side here uh, it's quite difficult to do on this one because the fuel inlets things there but yeah just push it out like that grab hold of it pull it out I'll take the old one out I mean these are brand new I say they have some cheap eBay sort of knockoffs. So, um, so I'm going to put these ones in, which are original ones, but they're in really good nick. So, so I'll take the pin out of this one. I don't know if you can pick that up, but you just pull the pin out like that. Comes out in one good. Comes out like that. And there 
the original needles. And they're in perfect condition then. So put these ones back into here. Make sure it drops into the hole. Push the pin back in. So I'll complete them, change the last one over. Let's see, how it get on from there. Right, it seems like I figured it out. Put them all in, the new ones, and um, everything's holding perfectly now. Um, if you're doing this yourself though, when you take the needles out, just make sure there's no debris in the, um, I don't know if people know what they look like, but um, where's the camera? So this is kind of, this is the needle, so the little rubber end on it. This goes into the hole, let's get these carbs. So this hole here, there's one here, one here, one here, one here. That's where the fuel comes in. So that little rubber bung, when it goes into the hole, that's what stops it. So when the floats come to the right height, it presses that in, stops the fuel coming in. But if you've got any debris inside there, any like dirt or grit or, it stops that sealing. So that can cause it to uh, flood as well. So if you're getting this problem and you want to have a look, make sure you do that. But I've socked these over now and it's holding, it's holding, it's been at 5.5 now for um, a good couple of minutes. So I'll just let the... Uh It is working. I've just I've noticed though as well these float balls um they're quite low. So I just need to adjust the tabs just to bring them up to um to eight mil. So um I'll do that and then I'll just quickly test them at the end before I close this video off. But um just give me two minutes. Well that's it definitely. That's the end of the video. Um it's holding 12 PSI now. So we just try it one more time. Yep, that's holding 13. So all I'll do now is um, just sort out the best pieces. Put it all back together. Uh, jobs are good. I think I'll just keep the original ones on because they wasn't leaking. Um, yeah. Make sure when you put them back on, remember that these like clips goes on like the one nearest to the um, idle, and it goes on the third one. Not the last one. So just just to be aware of that. Anyway, hope this has helped somebody. And until next time, thanks for watching. Okay, bye. All right, last little bit. I know I've said ta a few times now, but um, I put it all back together. Not started it, nothing. Not put no, not even adjusted the idle, nothing. Um, just don't, just open the garage door. <laughs> One thing I meant to say on the, I don't know if I did say, it's actually on the videos because it's been a while ago. 
the fuel air mixture screw that's usually sealed, it's usually plugged when it's a brand new bike. But if it's been dyno jetted, it'll been drilled out. Well, on the dyno jet um, website, it tells you to turn it out to two and a half. Well, I tried it at two and a half, and to me, it was running too rich. So I've t tried it now. Well, this is it now. This is me trying it at um, two and a quarter. Right then, here we go. It's a bit difficult to actually start this with one hand because um, you have to hold the clutch in and press it. So uh, I'm just going to put this down for a second. I'll just put it on the tank facing upwards. Put a little bit of clutch on. I mean, not clutch, choke. Oh my days, it's pouring fuel out again. Starting to really, really annoy me. I'm not sure what to do. Hmm. Okay, back to the drawing board. I'll still post this video up because um, there's some little facts and little bits in there that somebody might find helpful. But I'm starting to think it's something else with the carbs. It's it's definitely not the um, the float needles or the um, anything to do with that. Don't know where it's coming from. Anyway, getting late now, so I'll leave it till tomorrow. Till next time, thanks for watching. Bye.